Yo, what's up guys, d -Cell here, back with some Final Gear. And today, I wanna do something a little different that I haven't done before, and that is to do my version of a tier list. I think this will be a fun experience for everybody. Let me know in the comments down below what you agreed with, what you didn't agree with. Was it a bad take? Let me know all your thoughts. Also guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are so close to 2,000 subs. At 2,000 subscribers, we are doing that $20 giveaway. So if you do like this content and you haven't hit that subscribe button, do be sure to hit that so you get the notifications. And if you like the video, feel free to hit that like button as well. Also, follow me over at twitch.tv slash dcellgaming if you wanna follow along in our streaming adventures. All right, guys, let's go ahead and dive into the tier list. Now, I put as many units in here as possible that I could do, and I will have some links down below if you wanna to try to create your own tier list. And a few disclaimers before we get started. This is not going to be your normal tier list where it's like T0, T1, T2, you know, S tier, A tier, whatever. And I'll explain what each tier means to me and try to describe what I'm going for so you guys better understand what this tier list is about. Also, another thing to note about this tier list, guys, this only includes the units that we have for global. I do not see a reason to put in units that we don't even have yet. This is a global version only tier list. So please keep that in mind. If you comment like, oh, hey, where's Lillian or Nata, um, you know, Morgan or PN99, none of those units are in the game yet. There's no reason to put them in the tier. And as far as I'm concerned, they are trash tier because we can't use them. If you can't use a unit, they are not godly. They might, they might be godly when they get into the game, but right now, they're useless. All right, let's go ahead and define what I mean by each of these tiers. Godly, these are your units that are on the top of the top, right? They are the top of the top in global right now. You can put these units in any team and they will dominate. They're gonna do good. They're gonna have the highest damage output, for example. These are fantastic units, whether they're damage support, whether they're damage dealers, whether they're mitigation, whatever it is, these are the top of the top. Great units are a step below godly units, right? They're gonna be the units that are really strong, but they're, le they're lesser used, or they don't have as much damage output, or they have a little bit less accessibility, meaning they're gonna fit into smaller comps. So overall, they're, they're still fantastic units and you can use them, but they're not quite that godly tier. Now, niche units can either be godly or great, in their respective niche, in their respective use case, right? So think more like PVP units. They're gonna be really good in one game mode, but outside of that, not very good. So that's what's gonna be niche. So outside of their niche, not great, but inside they can either be godly or great. Now good units are gonna be the units that are either have usefulness early game or they're easy to build to get some kind, like you have a good bang for your buck out of them. This tier will also include units that can be great but require more investment in them, specifically their talents. So you have to put way more into them, but once they're there, they're great. So I'm gonna consider these units good because it takes so much to get them there, if that makes sense. Future units are gonna be units I generally consider bad however they're gonna get some kind of buff in the future or maybe a rework and then they're gonna be great but for now we're gonna keep an eye on them because they're not good yet and then the trash tier is gonna be pretty much completely avoid they're a waste of resources now I do want to mention if there's a unit in here that I didn't mention that I didn't put on the tier list that is either because they're trash or I haven't had really anything to do with them. I don't know much about them. If there's a unit in here that you think needs to be on the tier list, definitely let me know in the comments down below and I will adjust it accordingly. Okay, so let's go ahead and start down the list. And it's pretty much alphabetical, so that's how we're gonna do it. Starting with Afra. Afra, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in the good tier list. She can be a very good um, like taunting style tank mitigation. And if you were lucky enough to get her in the battle pass, uh, she will work well for you. The problem with her is there's much better damage mitigation that you can bring along. Uh, so she's going to be like average, right? So I'm going to put her in the good rank that's gonna bring us to Ida. Ida's trash i mean honestly i don't really see anybody using her that's my opinion um don't hate me for it alexa alexa is a great unit i think a lot of people sleep on alexa's damage output she actually is a really good unit yeah she's gonna get outshined by like nova but uh yeah alexa's really really good and honestly if you have her in your team you're gonna see excellent use out of her that's gonna bring us to eva one oscar and she's gonna be in the niche 
category. She does have pretty good damage uh, output. However, her primary niche is for PVP and shield bypassing. If there's a unit that has a shield or you're in PVP against like a Liangle, for example, she's gonna be a great, maybe even a godly tier unit in that very specific circumstance. Outside of that, she's kind of average at best. In my opinion, Eva 2 Asuka is going to be good. She's not great. Uh, I don't really see people getting much use out of her, but I don't think I would call her trash. That's going to bring us to Aya Kujo. Aya Kujo is going to be our first future unit okay so she's not great right now if you put a lot of investment into her she's really not going to get much you're not going to get much out of her however she's going to be getting a rework in the future which is going to drastically like just drastically change her usefulness and on top of that she will be getting a ur as well so with all that combined she's most likely going to just shoot straight up to the godly tier but for now we're going to put her in the future tier. bato is trash Bato could be good, but he's limited by his reload speed and he's just limited in how quickly he can attack. Yes, he's got damage over time, but overall, I don't see much use for Bato, unfortunately. Bernadette. Bernadette is good. Bernadette is not amazing. She's not great. However, in the early game, she can do a lot of damage and she can do area wide damage, which is pretty rare for the game, very consistently. However, once you start getting to the end game even early mid game you're gonna see bernadette's damage fall off that brings us to blade now blade is going to be our first godly unit even though blade is an sr her damage output is phenomenal her damn if you don't have any like decent like t0 you know s tier units and you get a completed blade she's going to take your progress and just take it to the next level what blade can do by herself as an sr is mind-blowing you can get all the way to floor 100 in the national war i know because i did it with blade alone you don't need any other dps other than a very well-built blade granted the usefulness out of blade is going to depend on how well built she is overall however the amount of damage that she can deal out is great so the next unit is calamus now calamus i'm also going to put in the godly tier and i think calamus i would put in front of blade i think overall calamus is fantastic and she has a higher upper limit than blade if you have Calamus in your party, consider yourself lucky. They fill the same role, they're both strikers. Calamus is going to attack a little faster and her upper limit is higher. So overall, I think Calamus is a godly unit in global. So next up on the list is Corlea. Corlea, I'm gonna put in, um, I'm gonna put in good for now. I might bump her to niche tier. We'll just have to see how that goes. Corlea can taunt and she's got a UR upgrade. So in PVP, she can have some kind of usefulness uh, just to soak a lot of damage and taunt things away. There is some usefulness there. I just don't really see much use in global right now. So I'm gonna put her as good because you can still use her, but she's she's gonna be outshone by a lot of other characters. Cynthia, I'm gonna put in great again. Cynthia is a unit that a lot of people just don't really you know pay attention to, but she has a decent output, right? She has a lot that she can bring to the table. Yes, there are units that are gonna perform better than her, but overall, if you have Cynthia in your party, you're gonna see great results. Next up is Dongo. I'm not quite sure where I want to put Dongo. I kind of want to put Dongo in the future tier or good tier because honestly right now I, she's not the greatest. I wouldn't put her great. So you know what? I'm going to put her in future tier because in the future, I think she's going to be a great unit. She's not going to be a godly unit, but she will be a great unit in the future. She will be getting that UR upgrade. So for now, I'm going to put her in the future tier next to Aya, but I will put Aya in front of Dongo because I think the rework and the UR that Aya gets We'll put her in godly and the UR that Dongo gets is going to just kind of put her in that great category, but not not godly. Dolores is straight trash. I hope you did not build her. There is nothing really redeemable redeemable about this character at all. OK, Shinji Kaoru, the duo mech. Not sure where I want to put them as well in the current state of global. I think I'm going to put them in godly behind blade. They do have that AOE damage and they do have a high 
uh, a pretty high ceiling for for dps and they do have that aoe so i think if you have the the, the duo in your team i think they're going to work very fantastic for you then they're most likely going to outshine if you don't have any of the other like godly units they're probably going to outshine anything that you have in your current roster as far as the current state of global goes elizabeth i'm going to put in good so let's i guess rearrange this a little bit we're going to put uh elizabeth um right right in the top part of good the reason why i'm going to say elizabeth is good is because in general i find that her damage support is very lacking yes she's going to get a ur in the future but right now in most game modes like let's say conflict zone specifically she doesn't really have enough time to really ramp up everybody's damage and overall i feel like her damage support is very flat so if you disagree with me uh, feel free to let me know in the comments down below but overall i just don't i don't see elizabeth as a great support unit and like even in her own like damage support niche she's not really great uh, in my opinion that's going to bring us to eloise eloise is going to be another good unit eloise when you first picked her up especially if you got her when she first dropped she was going to seem amazing but in my opinion her damage falls off and her usefulness as mitigation like a taunt mitigation also falls off as well is she a great unit maybe but i don't feel confident in in calling her a great unit i think she's good but her usefulness will begin to fall off and as more and more power creep comes into the game you're gonna see that while yes at first her dps looks really really good even for especially considering she's like a you know a tank uh, all of that's gonna kind of fall off and you're gonna see her usefulness fade faster and faster and right now i think she's a good unit i just don't call her i won't call her great esmeralda i'm gonna put right behind eloise esmeralda has a very specific use when you're first starting out she can be a decent healer especially if you put a high energy recharge weapon on her in the current state of the game if you're a new player and you're you can get like a blades weapon for example if you're lucky enough to get that she can actually be a pretty decent healer output um just build her high gear up and she's gonna do good for you right yes that's gonna fall off very very hard but early to mid game she can be a valuable asset for your team even though she will fall off later on i think she her usefulness early on is so uh good that i'll put her in the good tier evelyn and coral is is trash don't don't invest don't don't invest in her and i also think favia is trash as well there's no real reason to build favia some people might disagree with me oh but she you know she has shield bypassing capabilities but her damage output's very low even with that and you still have to spend money to get that custom mech so overall trash tier favia this one's gonna hurt me a little bit i like this unit and i do use her from time to time her damage output is good but i'm gonna put her in trash tier there's no real reason to go to floor 10 with her. there's no real reason to invest in her uh flavia just is she just falls flat it is what it is kauru on the other hand evil one kauru is great his dps is going to be fantastic he's not going to do like like blade or calamus level dps most likely especially with the energy like being nerfed for our version the energy regain that he had like in the chinese version but even with that his damage output is great and his high gear damage is really really good but overall i think he's a solid he is a solid pick for a dps krista krista is good support so what i'm gonna do is put krista actually in front of elizabeth i think uh, krista's support's really good i don't really think she's gonna do anything amazing um there's other support units that you can get she's a good unit if you have her and you're most likely not going to be disappointed with her damage support if you did pick her up however there are more units that provide a better bang for your buck but overall she's a good unit to have liangle so liangle is going to be our very first defense oriented godly unit and i am going to put liangle in, in the very front row of the godly units liangle has a massive shield that she gives everybody in your team that lets them not get stunned you know it has stun resistance it has a huge shield to go through before they their health ever goes down and she has very very minimal healing support as well overall liangle is a god 
tier unit in every sense of the word. Eva 2 Mari is going to be a great unit. Her DPS is really, really high. She, the only thing I don't like about her is the way her high gear plays out. Her high gear just feels like it takes forever, even though it looks awesome. After about seeing it like three or four times, you're like, you just want to get it over with. Other than that, like she has a very steady, consistent DPS output. And uh, I think for Mari, the Eva 2 Mari, I'm going to put her at the front of the um, great tier list she is fantastic she is a good uh, pickup the problem with mari is that she will get power creep very easily very quickly with lillian possibly being around the corner and once you have that you are sniper having mari as a sniper on your team kind of just doesn't make sense but even though that is the case her dps right now in global is so so amazing and uh, if you have her she's a good pickup so don't feel bad if that's the one that you got because her dps is very very high eva one mari on the other hand is trash i think she could probably do okay dps but there's no real reason to build her there's so many more strikers that attack faster there's so many stri strikers that have a higher ceiling than her so just not good majera so with majera i'm gonna put her probably at the front of the good uh, tier list and the reason why I'm gonna put her in good is because if you invest all the way into Majera and get her down to floor 10 you get her talent passes all the way out and you put a function assist chip on her her usefulness will go from good to great she will be right up there with the rest of the DPS options the problem is she takes a large large amount of investment to get to that point uh, so yeah to me it's like do you want to invest it so if you really like that unit you can invest in her and know that you'll have a great unit but if you don't put very much investment into majera she's gonna be average at best and you're not probably not gonna be <laughs> very happy with her dps output is, is how i'll say it mirabelle on the other hand is a fantastic niche unit i'm gonna put her in front of uh, Asuka and that is because her high gear can literally erase units in PvP her high gear she has the highest energy recharge weapon in the game the NFX sniper her sniper rifle is so useful you can put the, you can put it on other units and it make them better right and not only that she's gonna be way out of range in PvP most of the time she's gonna be sniping people from far away her single target damage is ridiculously good in PvP and like I said her high gear can literally erase targets they can't revive if her high gear kills them so next up on the list is Motoko so Motoko is definitely gonna be a godly unit I'm going to put Motoko right behind Liangle Motoko has very high damage and very 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 high burst damage capabilities and within about 30 to 35 seconds into a fight she can begin to ignore defense so yeah her damage output or her standalone damage output is amazing so if you pair her with some good damage support you're gonna see some really really good numbers from Motoko. now with mirasaki mirasaki i'm a little bit split on mirasaki i kind of want to put in trash but i think um honestly i'm gonna put her in niche because if you build mirasaki a very specific way she can be hilarious to use in pvp with that reflect damage that she can do so i'm gonna put her in niche for most players however she's trash there's really no reason to build her however if you've got the resources to spare and you want to build her for specifically for pvp she does have that option so i'm gonna put her in niche for now instead of trash okay so that's going to bring us to natasha i think natasha is good natasha is gonna be right there with the other supports i think um i'm gonna put her in front of all of the other supports natasha is really good especially if you have your you are her high gear will will just, it, it will help the problem with the problem with natasha is it takes an insane amount of investment to get that good support out of her i mean her baseline sr level is good as well overall supports in this game they're just not that fantastic 
uh it just is what it is but i think as far as support goes natasha is really good nia on the other hand is going to be another niche unit uh you can use her in pvp she has those stuns especially early game pvp she's gonna kind of wreck if no one else has her around but later in the game you're not really gonna see nia used that much she will be used but not really that much so we're gonna put her as a niche pvp unit nova i'm going to put as our next god tier unit and i'm gonna actually put nova in between calamus and blade nova's damage potential is absolutely insane she will be getting a ur in the future as well however that's more for like a pvp application and it doesn't really add much to her pve damage and this game after all is primarily pve focused speaking on her damage her just raw damage numbers she has amazing damage potential she can be a little hard to keep alive at times but her raw damage capabilities is really really good that's going to bring us to pandora now pandora is going to be our next future unit and i'm actually going to put her in front of dongo and behind aya so right now pandora is meh, she's not that great right but in the future we will be getting a ur upgrade that for some reason they make pandora ridiculously strong so do keep that in mind but that's going to be very very far in the future so for now and for the foreseeable future we're going to put her into that that tier right because she's just not really good you don't really want to invest anything in her and it's going to be so long for us to get that ur upgrade but when she does she's most likely going to be a godly unit pathalyn or pathogen evelyn she's trash don't use her pn26 pn26 is really good i'm gonna put her in uh the top of the good tier unit what makes her really good right now for global is she is our best en recharge battery right you can put her on a team and it will help them get out their high gears very quickly so and there's not really much you need to do to get her to that degree you don't need to ur her you don't need to level up all of her skills or whatever to get her to that to that place so what makes pn26 so good is if you need to do high gears in a very short amount of time like say the floor 95 national war boss she is excellent to put in there and you can get out a bunch of high gears very very quickly because she's going to help that energy recharge just go up right so she's a really good unit to have and you don't have to put a whole lot of investment to make her do her job unfortunately however pn72 is trash she attacks slow her damage is just low and the debuffs that she brings to the table really don't do much for your account purin is going to be our very first healing support god tier unit and i'm going to put her behind uh i don't know where i want to put her I'm gonna put her behind blade I'm gonna, and the reason why I'm gonna put her behind blade is because you don't really see a whole lot of usefulness for healing support in the game there are there are more cases where you need more dps than healing or survivability because most of the conflicts in this game most of the modes in this game your hp resets after the battle so what that means is if your units can survive to the to the end of the timer there was no need for healing support right but what makes her godly is not only does she bring healing support into the game she brings one of the i think actually it is the best damage support for bomber units she can make your bomber units do way more dps so if you have somebody like alexa for example and you're using her guess what your purin is going to make your alexa do really really good damage and on top of that she can buff morgan in the future uh, and, and you know pair pretty decently with her so but overall purin brings not only very good damage support but she brings an insane amount of healing to your team and at the same time she provides very minimal damage mitigation as well so she is the full package she is a very very good unit rebecca rebecca is she's going to be a good unit and i'm going i'm actually going to put her behind eloise and the reason why i'm even putting her on the tier list is because if you're a free-to-play player she can actually be a pretty decent option for a taunt if you need it especially early game so early game she can help she has her uses and um overall she's not that bad of a unit especially with that taunt in her skill kit eva one ray eva one ray we're going to put in the great list in the great tier because she's a really good damage she's really i'm sorry she's a really good 
uh, damage mitigation, right? She's a good tank for your team. She has a shield and she can taunt things to her if I remember right. So yeah, overall, Ray 1 from the EVA 1 collab, very, very good tank to have on your team. Ray 2, I'm also going to put in the great tier and I'm going to put her, um, I'm gonna put her right behind Mari if it'll let me there we go the reason why i'm not putting ray 2 or ray q or ray tentative name whatever you want to put her uh, the reason why i'm not putting her in the niche category is because i don't think ray is niche and that's because she has good pve damage is it going to be top tier no it's not but it's going to be really good in fact it probably will even like rival your ren or your tasia she has good damage in pve it's just not going to be top tier godly you know it's just not however her pvp usefulness is out of this world right with her rift or her counter attack she can take down any high speed uh attacking units like virate tasia for example even calamus she's she can take them down with that counter attack damage so her pvp she is a god tier pvp unit and she's a great um pve unit as well she can do decent uh, PVE damage. Don't sleep on the amount of damage that she can output in PVE. That's going to bring Rin to the back of the list in the great tier. Rin, her damage output potential is not that great and it has severely been power crept and I kind of want to, I probably should put her in the good tier. However, the fact that she will be getting a UR will bump that usefulness quite a bit up. So her, her future potential is good. So we're going to leave her in the great tier because her damage output's not bad, right? It's just not near, anywhere near the God tier tune, uh, the God tier units. That's going to bring us to Serial. Serial, uh, pretty much trash serenity is trash uh amine serica so amine serica is we're gonna put in great and then we're gonna put her right behind we're gonna put her right behind ray q so the reason that amine serica is really good is she provides very good heals if you have her custom mech so if you have her custom mech she has damage mitigation and heals and she has a mechanic that lets her get her high gear off pretty quickly even though her high gear takes a, a significant amount of energy to use so if you build amine serica right she for global currently she is a really good healer even though her high gear does feel like it drags on and takes forever it has damage mitigation in the form of reducing the uh, the amount of damage that enemies deal so that is a a pretty good amount i think it's like a 20 percent attack reduction on your enemies which is huge and then it also heals everybody so she is a very great unit to have if you have her built and provided you have her custom mech shinji um we'll put in good he does have a dot i don't really see a reason to build him unless you are a free to play player and you haven't invested in any other collab units i think he's better he's got more useful uh usefulness than a uh, bato for for sure and he attacks pretty decently and he does have that damage over time and uh yeah he's not great by any stretch of the imagination but uh he he, he fits firmly into the good category okay so this next unit might get me into a little bit of hot water with some of you <laughs> and that is Schmilly. Schmilly, i am going to put at the very top of the good tier now here is my reasoning for not calling Schmilly great Schmilly is very hard to build in global she's very very hard to get her skill levels up and you really need that level four skill to level five to get a good amount of usefulness out of her yes you can put a source code hmg on her and get an amazing i'm talking about a really good amount of healing out of her the problem is most game modes don't need that amount of healing right now and on top of that she doesn't really provide much else for your team and couple that with the fact that she's really hard to build i yeah i'm gonna have to put her in good tier it, even getting if you missed the free source code hmg from the event a couple months back it's really hard to get a level 61 yeah you can put a level 21 and get a good amount of usefulness out of her but even doing that um yeah it's hard to build schmilly in global it just is that is going to bring us to snowy snowy is a god tier support unit 
And honestly, I'm going to put her above Purin. And the reason why is she has compatibility with any DPS in the game. It doesn't matter what DPS it is, Snowy pairs well with them. And that is because Snowy gives them defense ignoring capabilities pretty much around the clock. So she's gonna pair well with any DPS that's currently in global. <laughs> there is not much else to say about Snowy. That fact alone makes her a god tier unit. And then she has the random buffs that she gives your team. You will pretty much always have a use for Snowy. You will always have a reason to have her around. She is a god tier unit. Solveg. Solveg is another god tier unit. We're going to put Solveg um, right behind Purin. Solveg is easy to build. Actually, you know what? Let me, I'm going to put Solveg... Um, I'm actually going to put Solveg right in front or right behind Modigo. Now that I'm thinking about it, Solveg is incredibly easy to build. Incredibly easy to build. All you need is her high gear up all the way. She's a blue unit, so you can six star her. You can talent her out very, very easy to get some survivability out of her. And then all you need is... Uh, lead rain shotgun Lee's SMG and if you're lucky enough to have an NFX you have a 40% damage reduction constantly it's at 100% uptime she's super easy to build and her damage her damage mitigation is absolutely insane so yeah considering her ease of build I'm gonna put her in third place in the god tier unit Samora is good I'm not, um, <laughs> Samora is good, right? The, the one thing that, that's interesting about Samora is she is the very, she is the, the only unit I think we have in global that can counteract uh, the counter attack that Ray Q has, right? Her, her buff or her passive actually does reduce the damage that she receives from Ray Q, but overall she's, she's just a good tank and there's so many better options out there for you. Sweetie, I think a lot of people sleep on sweetie and the usefulness that she can bring to your team now i'm kind of split on where i want to put her so what i'm gonna put her i'm gonna put her in the niche category and i'm actually going to put her at the very top of the niche category and let me explain what i mean and why i'm putting her there sweetie is incredibly easy to build all you need is to just have her and put a high energy charge re we weapon on her. Blades weapon works. You know the lead rain works. Um, the anything that has a high. If you have NF a spare NFX that works. Anything that has a high energy recharge and you just have her because what her high gear does is it hits units and any units that it hits it makes them take 100% increased damage. Now, no, this doesn't mean it doubles the damage done to them. It only equates to about a 30% damage increase. However, let me repeat what I just said. She can give your team a 30% roughly damage increase. And then the reason why she's niche, however, is because this only works on bosses that are more static. Any bosses that are kind of moving around too fast, it's really hard to get Sweetie to hit them with. But if you're in like the border conflict, what we saw with the border conflict with Ada, Ada was static enough. Yes, she did move, but she was static enough to constantly get hit by Sweetie's high gear. So in this, this niche circumstance, she is the best unit or damage support for running three DPS. There really is no other support unit in the game that's going to give everybody that big of a buff, right? Snowy only focus on one person. Elizabeth doesn't really provide that big of a boost to your team. Sweetie, on the other hand, if you're running three DPS, she can greatly increase all three of their dps at the same time so that makes sweetie very very good tasia is going to be in the great tier she has a ur upgrade she's right now doing more damage than uh ren and she has pretty she even though ray q is still around she uh, <clears throat> even though ray q is now around she still is a very good option to have built for pvp so overall she's a great unit still trita is also great right trita doesn't really need much 
to uh, have good. She doesn't. She has a generic passive, so you don't even really need to go in deep into her talent tree to get good DPS out of her. So overall, Treat is good. Her damage is gonna fall off. She's got power creep, just like Tasia and Ren. However, she's still good, and she has those shield bursting capabilities where she does extra damage to shield. So overall, she's great. Viola is going to be our f our last future tier unit on the list. Right now, I, I she just sucks. She's not great. Let's be honest, she's not really that great of a healer. However, she is going to get a custom mech in the future and her custom mech is going to change things. And then she'll be getting a UR as well. That's going to change things greatly for her as well. So right now we're just going to be looking for that upgrade. But uh, yeah, she's not really much to invest in right now because she's not going to bring, bring very much to your team at all. And last on the list is going to be Viorate. Viorate, I'm going to put at the top of the good tier list fire rates early game damage is not that great but once you start investing in her and building her if you have no other options she's pretty good she's going to be power cramped by pretty much any great like <laughs> listed unit like honestly she gets power crept a lot but she does have pretty decent damage especially if you pair her with an erosion chip she has that damage over time she has a high attack rate she can be useful in pvp and she has game modes so that, where she can really help however she does get power crept pretty hard what makes her such a good unit though is she's easy to build you have constant access to free talents for her right because you have the royal invitations and you can farm her uh, her dupes in the game and you can get her dupes from the regular recruitment so overall building her is not that hard and her dps is pretty good so that makes her a good unit in my eyes all right guys that's gonna be it for today i hope you enjoyed the video let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below did you like it did you hate it did you think i was way off base uh, I would love to know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support. And as always, guys, have a great day. Be safe out there. And I'll see you in the next one.